Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. Nigel here with you, Nigel's Model Events. Now we have part eight already of this beautiful Spitfire, as lovely as it is. So I've been playing around with it a bit off camera. I haven't actually done anything. I've just played with it, the, the model I mean. Um, and sort of, you know, I've had it up on its undercarriage and checking and everything. And something I would recommend you do uh, when, when you, before you actually glue your fuselage to your wings, whether you've done it my way or the way of the instructions, I would recommend um, get a clamp on here, so clamp the front of the fuselage to the wing, and then a couple of clamps down here, and a clamp on there if you can, and get the fuselage clamped firmly into the wings, and then sit it on its undercarriage, okay, and then I got a square, where's my square gone? I've put it away. I got a square, and check the squareness of the fin, because we need to make sure the fin is vertical. Now I don't know what I've done, but when I first did it, the fin was slightly off one way. Um, and I've looked at sort of, because I haven't glued this lower section here at the back, I looked at kind of, you know, bending the fin over, if you like, uh, with some packing in there, and I thought that might work, you know. Um, but it really does need to go down nice and tight. So I would say that if you have got issues, look at the wing and see if it's twisted, because it is still quite flexible and you can still twist it around check your wing tips uh, with with the with the wings sat on the undercarriage and check they're the same there and there and there and there because it could be that you've got your dihedral is absolutely fine if you check there and there the distance to the ground is fine but you might find that the distance there is different to that one so it means your, your, your dihedral is fine but your wings might be like this exaggerated so um because there is there is twist in that so basically, I would suggest, which you're going to see me do, get everything clamped up solid um, before you start doing any gluing. And I'm going to do some checks before I start doing any gluing as well. And what I intend to do is just glue in a few places where I can get to and then sort of just leave it to dry and see what happens. But um, yeah, it's a, it's a proper old, uh, proper little task. The other thing is, if, you've, if you use Black Mr. Servicer like I have... I would recommend getting away with it, uh, rubbing it away, because practically every joint I've glued with Mr. Servicer on it, the, the joint is broken. So um, I would recommend getting rid of it, just like that, or at least most of it. Let the glue get under it and attack the plastic. Um, it's not an issue I've had before. It's really strange. I don't know why I'm having it. I don't know if they've changed the formulation. I mean, I have just opened a new bottle. And as we know, we had real problems, didn't we, getting Black Mr. Servicer for um, for a long time. So I don't know if they've changed the formula or something, but you, I, these joints these joints here split open. You saw me crack that joint there. Wherever there's Mr. Servicer, it seems to have split. So uh, obviously the glue doesn't penetrate very well. So um, what we're going to do now is we'll look at this bulkhead. The bulkhead needs to go in. Because I don't think, I would rather fit it afterwards if I could, but I don't think we'll get it in. Oh yes we can. Oh hang on there, with it glued in, with it in place, I'm not sure we'd get it in there. If it's actually in place, let me get my hand under there and hold it. Yeah, you're not going to get it in with that fuel filler on there. I mean I, I suppose you could always glue that fuel filler into the fuselage, but um... We may as well just glue it in. Be done with it. So I'm going to get that in there. You can see we've got the fuel filler on there. And I've, I've just gone around with a brush and painted that black. Just so that you don't see any um, grey plastic down in there once it's finished. And what I'm going to do. I want it to fit nice and tightly into this fuselage. Because we do not want it holding us off. So I'm going to put that clamp on there. And hold the bulkhead in nice and solid. In fact, that's bending there, so I'm going to pull that out. It's a little bit too tight, I think, Nigel. These clamps are a right pain. You pick them up, the lightest pressure will close them. And as soon as you want to open them, they're a nightmare to get apart. And it's always when you're stuck with one hand. Right. So... It's still bending it. I'll get this in. You don't need to watch me do this. But the problem is I'm bending that in there. So I need to get less angle on here on the top, I think. But what I don't want to do is pull down on that fuel filler. 
that'll do. So we got that in there like that, so we'll get some extra thin and we can run it into there. Just like so, and we can run some into there. Get a nice solid joint. Let it capillary around. And then we can put a drop up under here. And I'll tell you what, I think there's a couple of parts going in those slots, so we can put some in there and let that capillary around. In fact, I'm going to deal with those joints there, I think, with some Mr. Surfacer, so we will, or maybe some super glue. We go just wipe that right so I'll let that set and then I'll be back okay so that's glued in oh I didn't realize that was there sorry it sat on the bottom of the airfix box um that's the Lancaster a lot of you say you love watching the Lancaster and the Spitfire there's the Lancaster and the Spitfire so there we are um so that's glued in I've put some uh not Mr. Service or some super glue around there this is this stuff it's bloody awesome I love it VMX, VMS Flexi 5K CA, it's really, really good. This is the black thin one, but there's an ordinary black one as well. Uh, black super glue is the way to go. It's, it's bloody awesome. And then you've also got this one as well, which is in the drawer to my right. There's this one here, Black Slow Dry by Mig Ammo. It's bloody awesome or, as well. Um, so, yeah, loving these black super glues. They're great. And they're going to be really handy when it comes to doing some stuff with some ships because the trouble is with ship models not ship models, ship models, you know, you glue tiny bits of photo etch, like railings around funnels and stuff like that, and you put the super glue and it looks bloody lovely until you give it a coat of primer and there's these blobs of super glue everywhere. The beauty of the black is you can just wick it off with a cotton bud and it takes a while to dry as well, which is a good thing. So, um, I mean, I put that on 10 minutes ago and you can see it's still wet there on the surface. Obviously, when you close things up, you can move things around and then push them. When you push them, they dry. So, um, yeah, really, really good. And as for the Lancaster, I've just masked off the rear turret area, ready to spray this area here green. And I've also masked off the nose area with a paper tube and some foam ready to paint that area green, because I think that area in there should be green. So that's what I'm doing. It's not the interior green, it's a darker green. Um, and I think I'm going to use the same on the Spitfire, because you have the interior green which is very light in color and then there's this darker green and certainly on the Lancasters you can see photographic proof from World War II that the interior was a lighter green than the like the engine bearers and stuff so very interesting anyway so um this still needs to dry uh, I just tried it on the on the wing it fits lovely and snugly but you can see by that white mark there you can see that it's actually Pulled it apart, so we need to um, get that glued in solid and let it dry. So can't do anything with this for a while. Best get on to Lancaster, hadn't I? Right. So here we go. That bulkhead's in, all nice and dry now. It's like half past one in the morning, and I was thinking I won't do any more tonight. I'm gonna, I'll do it in the morning. But I'm thinking I'm gonna get this back end glued in here and not touch the sides, and then that can go hard overnight. Well, into the night, and then tomorrow I'll be ready to go. So, um, <clears throat> something I, I don't remember if I showed you in the last part or not. If I did, I'm sorry for repeating myself. But if you remember, I said this riveting down here was, was pretty awful on this side at the top. And this side was practically non-existent. So I've re-riveted it. And I don't remember if I showed you it or not. And I honestly can't be bothered to go back and have a look. Because it means I have to go back into YouTube and find it and everything. But um, basically, you can see that I've now re-riveted that, that, that spine. And what I've done is painted it with some black paint and then gone over it with like a 2500 grit sanding sponge and it will show up any riveting that's there because there'll be black paint in the rivets. So you can see now that we've got a far superior finish. What you are seeing there, the bigger black marks is the um, super glue that I used to fill the holes in because they were, I think I did discuss it with you, because of the way it's moulded, you know, if, if it's moulded this way, then the pin becomes... Obviously, if you have a face which is like, if this is your pin and the face is like that, you end up with an indentation. And the more angle you get, the more you end up with a sort of ellipse, if you like. So, um, 
so that's what I've done there and it will look so much better under a coat of paint I've also put a little layer of lap black paint and a quick rub over with a sponge just to see if there's a witness there or anything and it's all looking really really nice now if anything this fuselage kind of has a sort of flat spot on it there's a couple of um, mold seams down here which you have to get rid of but I'm just sort of wary that it should be a bit rounder than it is in fact if I can find it in the box we should have the engine cover in here somewhere yep there it is right at the bottom of the box so yeah that's the same kind of shape so that's fitting on there lovely so uh so I guess I'll leave that. In fact, it's a little bit, it needs to be opened out a bit. It's a bit sort of, um, here we go. So we might have to warm that up and open it out a bit because that's a bit narrow when it goes in. You can see it's sort of pinching on the, it's pinching in on the sides. So anyway, right. So major, major part of the build now. We're going to get this wing mounted onto this fuselage so we know we've got everything good in here that's all done i've painted the back of that so we're good to go we've got, we haven't forgotten anything we can just get this to fit over there and slot that into there now bear in mind if you're watching this and you haven't seen my other videos i've come away from, i've broken away from the airfix way of doing it they recommend putting the lower wings onto the fuselage and then adding the upper wings after i've done it this way round um, just because I wanted to see that this wing route is going to be nice when the wings are fitted what I've discovered is without the top wing on there you've got a bit of play so you could end up getting the fuselage off square with the uh, out of square with the spar and then your, your top wings wouldn't fit properly so that's why I've done it this way around you must build yours the way you want to go so um, I want to glue this area here and yes, I don't want to come up to here. I just want to glue that area there because that is going to give me my fore aft position. And with this glue drying the bulkhead and the fit is so lovely in there, it's kind of looking like we're good to go. Um, I'm going to put a clamp on the, I'm being careful not to push down on that fuel filler because I don't want that to be uh, pushed down in. So I can pull this wing back, I can get this down in here and I can see that that, is gonna, that fits absolutely lovely in there. So we somehow need to kind of lock that in. Now I can put a clamp on here, but my fear is that the clamp, my fear is if I put a clamp on there that the glue will capillary under the clamp. Let me just see if the clamp is going to touch the glued areas. Okay, we should be safe. So that's nice and flush there. As you can see, it's still sticking up there. Should tighten this clamp a bit more. Really pull it down in. The fit there, guys, is one of the best I've ever seen for a belly going into a fuselage. It's really, really nice. There's a very slight step, but it is like literally nothing. Um, and as you can see the wings and everything fit beautifully but as I say I only want to glue this area here now something I wish model manufacturers would stop doing they've put the they've put the glue line on a seam line which is a nightmare because that means that if we want to rescribe that line we're scribing into a glue line you kind of get the scriber digging in because it's soft it wanders off whatever I really really wish manufacturers would put the seam line sort of two millimeters away from from the glue line and then you know you could glue it back here say and then you sand it all flat and put your seam line in it's, it's you know because gluing in making a seam line where the actual glue line is is a nightmare having said that I'm not sure that there is a seam line across the belly here there may well be the seam lines there because that's the back end of the fairing but the actual center part there I'm not so sure there's a seam line here look on the side so what I'm going to do is much to my dismay 
what I'm going to do is use some extra thin on the sides here so I can put a drop of extra thin in there quite a big drop I want this properly glued in place I don't want any movement and I certainly don't want it cracking so we've made sure the foam isn't actually touching those seam lines so I can get some glue into there get that fully glued in just like so and then on that line at the back I'm going to grab some fresh super glue of choice flexi k black thin or flexi 5k black thin has the nozzle finally blocked up nope <laughs> this stuff is amazing you can see how flexible it is if we look on the end here you can see that it's, it's all like rubbery it's not it's not like CA glue at all as, as we know it but I can see that the end is kind of blocked up there we go I'll leave that on the side I'll give it a good clean right so I'm going to clean off my glue applicator this is a a lot of people use a lighter to clean them off I like to use a knife if I can because a lighter kind of distorts them anneals the material whatever so I'm going to come in from this side I'm coming in from the back because we've got rivet detail on that seam line I'm coming in from the back so if I've got any lumps of glue or anything it's behind those rivets so you can see what I'm doing hopefully I'm coming in from the back and just pushing the glue into that joint and allowing it to wick down so that we don't lose any of that rivet detail if we do we could just replace it but I'll be honest guys I cannot stand riveting I don't like weathering and I don't like riveting believe it or not and then we come to these sides the rivets cross over to the back side of the join I've got a feeling we've lost those So what I'm hoping there is that glue will capillary into that join and then when we sand it it will make it much easier to scribe a line in it because it's always easier to, to scribe a line in super glue than it is in a solvent glued join unless you leave it for like an hour well an hour a month or even more and I'm going to put some super glue in here just to fill that seam or that, that join there's no seam line there it's just a join so we're going to sand that and feather it out the way Airfix have designed this is incredible they, I wish they hadn't put that seam line there on a join line but the way they've done this so you don't have this horrible sharp edge to deal with I really do like the way they've done this so well done Mr Designer And there we go so we can see there we've got our glued and sealed rear end and I can leave that now to go hard for the rest of the night and then we'll pick it up again tomorrow when I'll be back with you so I'll see you then moving forward about 12 14 hours there we go all dry unclamped I've rescribed it re-riveted it and uh, it's all looking good so the wing is now attached to the fuselage so obviously the front is not glued, we've just done the back, which is what I wanted to do is get that bit there right. Now I'm going to do the front, okay, so get the front really tightly clamped into the wing, 
and just get the front glued and then the problem is going to be with dealing with these sides because as you can see here if I put some pressure if you look at this route here if I put some pressure under there you can see it comes up so I'm gonna have to find some way of clamping that up to the top I don't know how I'm gonna, how I'm gonna manage that I'll, I'll maybe put a bar across or something and clamp onto the bar I don't know we'll see I'll, I will come up with something and I will show you what I've done when I do it um, but basically I'm now going to glue the front so once again we're going to get this glued together and then clamp it in place now I want to clamp this in place I don't want the clamp to be in anywhere near the glue where the glue is going to be I'm also worried about pushing that um, let's grab my little scrap plastic bin and find a well there we go straight away find a piece of plastic card let's find something a bit smaller um, and basically I don't want to push we go. I don't want to push that fuel cap in right there we go so that's the trouble is, you see, this clamp is right exactly where I want to glue, and the glue is going to capillary under that clamp and cause all sorts of troubles. So, Drew, can I move the clamp forward to get that foam away from the gluing area? Yes. Nope, it's still there. All right, hang on. I think that'll be okay. Uh, what we'll do is just glue the, the bulkhead into the wing. And then what we'll do is um, glue the bottom afterwards. So get some glue into that joint there. Make sure we get it glued into the wing. Like so. So I'm not flooding it. This the, the glue is getting low, so every blush brush application is, is hardly anything. So I'm gonna put one more drop down in there. And one more drop down in there and then leave that for another I don't know eight twelve hours whatever so I'll see you then <laughs> okay so while that's drying um, I've put a rubber band on to pull the dihedral of the wings tight in here and I've put some glue in the ends of that uh, spar there where the cracks were so um hopefully that'll glue up now nice and tight so we can leave that now and uh, let that dry so in the meantime, rather than have it all switched off and not be able to make a video or anything, let's start looking at these exhausts. So we have the exhausts on the sprue here. I tell you, let's zoom in. Let's zoom you in. Bring the camera this way as well. Hang on. There we go. Okay, that's better. Right. So what we have here, obviously, we've got the 12 exhausts. And to give them hollow ends, what they've done is moulded them with the main section here. And then a secondary piece there, which is going to get cut off and glued onto the back. I've also noticed that here they've got a great big hollow recess in the back. And I know why they've done that is to stop you getting shrink marks here. But do you really want your exhaust to be hollow on the underside? I've never seen that before. I don't know why they didn't make them in two halves. I don't know that that would have prevented it. You'd have also been easy to get the hollow. Um, I also don't like the way they've put the sprue connector on here because there's a weld seam around there and they've actually got the weld seam molded on there but then they've got a sprue connector in it so you, you're gonna destroy that anyway so I think we'll have to grab some stretch sprue or something but this I think is going to be the first bit of aftermarket you're going to see knocking around for this is going to be the exhaust so um I've also found out that the somebody emailed me last night and told me that uh, the Qatari Spitfire the um the one from New Zealand has been delayed due to certain issues with um, uh, logistics or whatever. But it looks like that's going to now be sort of February, March time. 
um, but also that the initial if you've bought if you ordered your kit from Qatari rather than all of the other suppliers you're going to be one of the first to get your kit and also you'll get 3d printed exhausts with the kit as well so obviously that needs exhaust as well one would assume so um, yeah and when you think about it the exhausts in the border model Lancaster are bloody gorgeous so uh, here we go so what I'm going to do with these is get these off the sprue but instead of just going in and cutting them off what I'm going to do is just cut the cut this side off we'll go in fairly close because we're going to be cleaning that up anyway so I'm going to cut this side off here and then I'm going to cut the sprue there and there oh we've got that off there so now we can, we've got something to hold on to to work on those seams. So we'll do the same on the other side. Cut these off of here. Just like so. And then cut down there. There we go. I've got some bad news for you guys. My cold has come back. Well, it's not bad news for you, it's bad news for me, isn't it? So up here, we have these banks of the inner part. And I've noticed that on these, if I can get it to show you close that where's the worst one? They've got flash, they've got ejector pin mark on the back. And they've got flash on them. If you can see, so we need to clean those up. So I'm going to get a round blade and just probably best to scrape it. I don't know. Yeah, best to scrape it off. It's only a light bit of flash, but it's going to affect the fit because that is the. You can see that face there is going to go into the back of there, into the back of here. So that is going to be your mounting face. So I'm going to go along and get these all cleaned up and get rid of the um get rid of the flash and then we can get all these cut off the sprue and get them glued in uh, and then we can let that cure let the glue go off and then we can do some work on them right so they're all cleaned up now got rid of the mold seams and the um and the sprue nibs haven't bothered touching the ends because we're going to go around those once we get these bits glued on so basically we've got left and right hand ones of these so i'm going to get these off the sprue cut as near as i can to the part there we go so we get one off one side one off the other and we'll see how they look so the side that you're cutting is i'm sorry about the state of my fingers guys this is super glue that i cannot get off and I've cut my finger there as well, so well, I haven't cut it, so it's dry skin, it's split because it's so bloody cold when I take Jess out. And I'll have to uh, I'll have to start wearing gloves. So this side is gonna go that's the wrong one. No, nope, it was the right one. So basically, as you can see, that is gonna sit on there like that. You can see the separate part there. So literally with that roughly in place, I'm going to grab a drop of extra thin and just tap it on there. And then once it's got some glue on there, we'll manipulate it. And yeah, we've got a seam to clean up. We've got a seam on the bottom. Like that, and we're going to have to fill that in, in there because it's going to look awful once it's got a wash on it. So uh, I really don't know why they've done it like this. It's um why don't they just make them in two halves? <laughs> don't get it. That way you'd have had a hollow you'd have a hollow exhaust and you'd have also had the seam as your as your weld seam, which would have been great. You could have just put some extra thin in there, squeezed them, job done. But, um Yes. 
but it is what it is we got what we got and that's that so there you can see there's one exhaust made up what they're going to fit in the engine like uh, so that's that side so that's going to go in there <clears throat> like so so you can see where are we here we are but underneath you got that great big hollow so I think I'm going to fill that because <clears throat> I don't like that great big void right so let's get another one done nice to break that one off the sprue or it fell off the sprue should I say so is it going to be easier to do these on the sprue let's see there we go I'm just trying to avoid having to hold this tiny little thing especially when it comes to filling them that's going to make it a lot easier when they're on the sprue so uh So there we go, so that's that. So we've got quite a joint to clean up as you can see. Let's grab some tweezers and give it a squeeze, wrong ones. Let's give it a squeeze. So yeah, you can see we've got, we've got a joint around there that we have to deal with. But, uh, yeah. I can see myself ending up sanding the whole thing and then replacing the welds with stretch sprue, which I'll show you. So I'm going to get the rest of these glued on and then I'll be back. Right, back. So glued all them on. Uh, and as you can see, we've got gaps and stuff we need to fill. You can see this one here is particularly not very nice. So we'll get around that with some super glue. But at the moment, I'm going to concentrate on filling those big holes in the back and then we'll have this big sand thing we need to sand down so what I've discovered I've got one here I've glued in if you take the sprue that your little nib and nubbins came on I've got a coarse sanding stick here and I'm just sanding one side of the of the sprue to kind of put a flat in it and then it will go in it'll fit in there then need a bit more off of there We're putting the flat onto that side so then what we can do is cut that off of there to give us like an l-shaped tab if you like that'll do a few of them and then just check it's gonna fit just check it's gonna go in there yeah, what's happening as I cut them, it's putting a burr up on it, so just sand a bit more for there. I mean, you may choose not to fill these, you may choose to use a different method. And I'm just going to dip that in some super glue, get a nice big blob of super glue on there, and just push it in there, just like so. And we'll check the next one. That one's going to fit absolutely fine, get a nice big blob of super glue, and just push it in. Just like so. That one fits. And the only reason I'm doing this, guys, is to show you how I'm going about it, how you might want to do it if you're if you want to fill them in as well. Um, they probably won't be seen, but you know, it's a lovely looking model. I don't want to sort of pick it up or photograph it from the underside and see those great big holes in there. It's horrible. So I'm going to fill them in. Uh, so just do these next two. That will need something sanded off the end because it's got a great big angle on it. Running out of glue here. And then the last one. Get that 
in there like that and there we are that's them all done and then all we've got to do is get some more I'm using the black there must be a tiny hole in these nozzles because the hole in the end of the nozzle is quite big but the actual it takes quite a lot of pressure to get the glue out this is the VMX VMX, I keep calling it VMS, VMS, it's VMS, I keep calling it VMX, that's the black one, that's not the thin one. Um, and then with my glue looper, I am going to come along and just pour glue into there. And let that wick down around it. Just like so. Too much on there. In there, so in there. And the beauty of this one. It takes, it's thicker, it takes longer to dry. So you've got more time to work with it should you want to be playing around with stuff, fitting, you know, your little tiny parts to your cockpit or whatever, or your ships. So there we are. So that, we can let that dry, perhaps give it some accelerator, and then just cut the sprue off, and then we can use those sprues that we cut off on the, on the next ones. So uh, there we go. That one started to dry. Let's just run some into there, just like so. And that should do us. So what we'll do is let that dry, say so cut them off, and then we'll use those on the next ones. And uh, and then we'll look at sanding them all flat. Right, so as you can see, we've got them here, the ones cut off. So we can come along now and trim away. In fact, I think it's going to be easier with taking off the sprue. So we've got the... It's still a bit wet on there. This is how I get the black on my fingers, you see. Um, so we can carve this away now. This sprue, get it roughly the right shape. We're not after any high precision or anything here, because after all, these things in real life are fabricated from sheet. So they won't be a... They're very good, but they won't be absolutely perfect. It won't be like a like a casting with perfectly even sides and everything. And I know you're all going to be, oh, they're very good. Yes, I know. You used to make the elephant's ass and the elephant's trousers for the Harrier. But um, there we go. So basically, that's what you're looking for. So you can see we've got that great big hole underneath filled mainly with sprue, and we've got a bit of super glue around the edges. And then where we can see any low spots, we just come on with a drop of super glue, just a tiny drop, and just put it in around there. And then let that dry, and we can sand that when it's gone hard. You can also see that I've gone around this one. You can see I've gone around the ends as well and filled in those gaps with super glue. So um, basically now it's just a case of letting this all dry and uh, and then stand the ends and then we'll look at getting some stretch sprue to replicate the weld seams. And there we go. All done. Filled in the holes in the back as you can see. And then gone round the corners, done all the sanding, got it all sanded out smooth, removed, sorry about the state of my fingers guys, they're disgusting. Um, removed all the, uh, the seams and everything and removed all the mould on weld seams because obviously to get in around them and sand and there was a mould seam down the middle as well. So yeah, it's just, a, a, just may as well take them all off and if you're going to replace some of them, I'm just going to go over now with a sponge. I've just noticed I've got some sort of edges and stuff on there. 
So I'll just go in with a sponge. And what we'll do, we'll do one of these on camera and then I'll do the rest off. I think if we've got enough time, yeah, I think we'll have enough time. We'll do one of these on camera and then we'll call that a day for this video, I think. Right, so don't worry, we will come back to this. But obviously I need to get videos out, but I also need to leave it to go hard. And I've got a lot, <laughs> whoa, missus, I've got a lot of glue in there. So I want to leave this about 12, 18 hours before I start undoing this clamp because it's going to want to pull up. So uh, we're going to be putting a lot of air stress into that area, putting all the wing in and everything. So we need to make sure it's good and hard. Um, so after we've done all this, we're going to go around with a knife and thin out the plastic wall around the edge here. But I'm going to do it afterwards because otherwise I don't want a really soft edge there that if I just literally touch it, it's going to mark it or something. So we're going to do the, um, the weld seams that we've removed and the ones that we would have to have to replace even if we don't remove them because that sprue nib is right in the middle there. Where they couldn't have the sprue nib come off the end, I don't know. But, um, or mould them like the, um, like they are on the Wing Out Wings Lancaster, the Border Model Lancaster, should I say. And they've kind of slide, not slide mould, but they've moulded them like that. So, so they, they come out of the mould. I don't know why they didn't do that. It's um, very, very strange. So, uh, yeah, probably the worst part of the kit so far, I think. And I mean, if that's the worst part of the kit, then hey, it's a bloody good kit, isn't it? It's not a kit of the year. Um, no way is it the kit of the year. Um, this is where you, you know, you do these reviews and you look at it and it's like, wow, it's amazing. All the details good and everything. And out of box reviews, I do them all the time and I say that's wonderful. But you have to actually build it to see how good it is. So I've got a candle light, a tea light here. Uh, it's a Christmassy one, so it smells lovely. And what I'm going to do, I've got some sprue length, so sprue from this box, so it's still out of the box. I'm just going to hold this sprue over that flame and gently turn the sprue until I start to see it start to sag. You don't really want to go touching the flame because you end up with black soot and you don't want to be breathing in the, the molten plastic. There we go. You see it's starting to go. And I can just note it's not hot enough yet. We need to get it really hot. So it really starts to droop on us. There you go, you can see it's starting to go shiny, so that's how this plastic responds. You can see it's actually shrinking and growing and weird. So just pull this. You can see now I'm pulling it, I just keep pulling it. Just like so. And the reason I'm doing it, I want big long lengths because I want consistency. Now, if I do another one now, getting it the same size as this would be very difficult. So now I have got here probably what's that there? That must be that must be nearly a meter. It's two feet at least um, of stretch sprue which I think is going to be perfect, yeah, for these welds. So I'm just going to measure this to let you know what I've done. I wouldn't normally bother measuring it, but I'm just going to, in case you want to know what size it is. That's 0.18 millimeters there, 0.17. And as you can see, you see, if you do one long length, that's 0.18 there, you get the consistency, which is what you want. If you do little bits and pieces, see what this is like here. I mean, as I said, I wouldn't normally bother measuring it. You see, that's 0.15, so that's a lot thinner. I know it doesn't sound a lot, but it's, you know, it's like 30%. So it'll probably show that's 0.15. Yeah, I'm 0.18 now. Okay, so we've got some we can use there. The rest of that is all too thick, so we'll get rid of that. Right. I'll show you now. If I do, if I do different bits and pieces, obviously the thing with this plastic is watch for it to go shiny. It starts to droop, and then it goes shiny. When it goes shiny, that's when it's ready to go. 
So I can pull that like that. Okay, and then I could do another one, another one, another one. And the chances of getting them the same, like if you look at this one, oh, look at that. Wait, what are <laughs> Sod slowing it with the bloody cameras on. Look at that. It's exactly the same. <coughs> Excuse me. That's unbelievable. <coughs> I bet I couldn't do that. I bet I cannot do another. No, it's no point doing that because I just purposely don't do it. Now. But we've got we've got some lovely lengths now that we can use for our weld seams. So, look the candle out. And we'll start doing some stretch sprue work. Right, so this is where the liquid cement is our friend. So we'll get some tammy extra thin. Now I want to put a ring around here, which is about, there's a witness of that mark on the left. So it's about one and a half millimeters. Let's see if I can find another one with a witness. I should have measured it before I sounded them off. Okay, it's about one millimetre in from the end. It doesn't need to be perfect, but getting them good will be uh, good enough. <clears throat> so we'll start on the outside so that the joint is on the inside. So what I'm going to do, I've got my stretch sprue there. Just put some extra thin on there. Don't worry about flooding it. And then we just put a piece of stretch sprue on there. Make sure it's nice and square. I think it'd be easier to put these in one of these paint clamps, you know, try and hold it in one of them. There we go, make it look a bit easier. <coughs> Proper frog's throat. Okay, so there we go, that's about a millimetre from the end. So we'll just brush some extra thin over there. And I'm going to brush some extra thin onto the stretch sprue, which will soften it and allow me to pull it around. Hasn't softened it enough, has it? So I'm going to push that down. I think what we need to do is push it onto the top and let it dry. Oh, there we go. It's starting to work now. Need to give the glue some time to work, obviously. Don't worry about glue marks everywhere because it's all going to be cleaned up afterwards. So we'll get some extra thin on that stretch sprue, get it soft, pull it round. And there we go, you can see that's gone round there. And then pull this one round here. And then I'm going to come in with a knife and cut through the two. And then remove that bit. And remove that bit. And then we can join them together. Just push them in parallel. And make sure it's all nice and tight in there. <coughs> Excuse my voice, guys. Jeez, I've got disgusting hands. Crappy voice. Great in it, eh? And you still come back and watch me. There we go. <clears throat> so you can see now we've got... Push that a bit flat there. I must have pushed down on it too hard. Just bring it back up to shape. Like I say, this is going to be a weld seam, so it doesn't really matter if it's all distorted or whatever. But you can see on there now, if you could make it out, we've got that rim around the edge. So I've got to repeat that on all the others now. But before we do that, I'm going to do the centre seam. 
So I'm going to brush some extra thin down there. I'm going to get another piece of sprue, which is there's static in it, which is handy. That's, that glue is dried already, so I'll put some more on there. And then come down the centre, we can see the pit mark where the where the sprue nib was. So we've got our centre there. Let's just brush some extra thin onto that. Push it over a bit there. Get that to go down. There we go. And then just make sure it's on the centre or thereabouts. So even if you're not going to go to all the fuss that I've done, you want this is, this is the one you at least you want to do because you're going to remove that sprue nib. And it's going to make them look a lot better if you don't have that lump in there. What about lump? What am I talking about? It's going to look better if you don't have the the um. The miss <laughs> trying to concentrate and talk at the same time, it's so difficult. Um, it's so difficult trying to concentrate when you're as thick as me. Um, when you remove the sprue nib, you're going to have that blank patch, so you want to be replacing that really. I'm just going to move that over because it looks a little bit off centre. So we'll just push it over. So it doesn't need to be perfect. Okay. So there we are. Now, if I wasn't building this out of the box, what I would do now is I would do one pair of these and then I would make a resin mould of them and I would mould them so that I could just have them all exactly the same and they'd all look great there because they all be even but because this is out of the box I'm not going to do that as much as I'm tempted to I'm not going to do it so there we are so I'm just going to turn it over now do the inside in fact, I'll do that on camera. I wasn't going to do it on camera, but I will. Here we go. Get that nice and wet with our glue. Grab a piece of stretch sprue. I'm going to put a bend in this. Just so I can get it down like that. This one's on the inside, so it really doesn't matter. Bend I've put in there is a bit tight, isn't it? Never mind. It'll soon come out once the extra thing gets to work. I hear the kids coming home from school. It's their last day today, it before Christmas, so I'm guessing they're all going to be full of it. I know we need to need a week off before Christmas. It's Friday today. It's not Christmas till next Sunday. But I guess you know they only get like was it thirteen weeks a year off? So I guess the teachers need a break, don't they? There we are. So there you go. That's how to do it. So that's if you can make it out. That's the stretch sprue on there. So we just leave that to dry. Just put some more glue on it to soften it up and blend it all in a bit. Not get any glue on the brush here. There we go. So we leave that to dry, leave that for a good sort of two or three hours, let it go nice and hard, and then trim it off and everything. But uh, that's basically what we're looking for. And then once we've got the, it's all dry and everything, then we can go over it and just 
with a knife the back of a knife just just make little indentations in it and just pull it around and make it look a little bit uneven and stuff and uh, just to depict a weld and that's it the other thing I've done with it I don't think I'll do it on these because it's so small but if you can find like a drive shaft off a radio control car or something that's got a spline on the end if you roll that over the sprue it kind of makes marks in it and that will give you that sort of um, that weld look as well the other thing you can do is get a piece of coarse like here that we've got a fairly coarse sanding stick if you push that down onto it that will sometimes give you a, a welded look as well what you're after really is an uneven sort of line so it looks like a weld there you go let's get some more extra thin on there you can just push that stick into it or give it that uneven look and hopefully you can see that on the camera it'll look much better when it's primed and painted and stuff and I'll be going over the Mr Surfacer anyway to soften it all up There we go. So that's how we do our exhaust. So I've just got another 11 to do. Thanks for watching, guys. I will see you, as I say, don't worry. I'm sorry it's all a bit all over the place, but we've got to keep going. Um, once this is dry on the front, I'll be taking this clamp off. I won't do anything off camera. And then we're going to come along and we're going to deal with the, with the fillet here. And then we've got these pieces to go in here after we've done the engine and everything. But I do want to fit them. Not glue them, but fit them now, because I think we're going to have some issues fitting them because we've done a lot of modification here. So I'll see you all for the next one. This has been part eight, so the next one will be part nine. Yay, I'm a mathematician. And, uh, and we'll go from there. Of course, the other thing you may choose to do, guys, is not do these wild seams at all and just have them smooth like that, which would be absolutely fine. But uh, if it's just you looking at your model and you're, putting, you're not putting in shows and stuff, you can do whatever you want. And as I say, that filling underneath, you may choose to do that or not, but it's just something I chose to do because, you know, I didn't want to pick the plane up and look at it and see great big holes in there. It's not a Fisher Price, is it? So, um, as I say, I think this is probably, for me, the worst part of the kit. But, um, you know, if that's all, if this is all that's wrong with it, hey. <laughs> That makes it a pretty bloody good model, doesn't it? There we go. Frank Kellen. Maybe I can make a shadow. There you go, that's better. Now well, you can see it in the shadow. And there we are. So I'll see you all for part nine. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.